Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the most underrated muscle group for aesthetics. And unlike what you might think, it's not the arms, it's not the abs, it's actually the neck. Nothing will make your physique look better than a thick neck. And inversely, even if you have a very good physique, if your neck is small, it's going to make everything else look bad. I've seen that times and times again with great natural bodybuilders who have amazing shoulders, a great core, good legs, but they neglected their neck and therefore everything looks ridiculous because of it, since of course the eyes are going to focus on the face a lot. And this is the second advantage of training neck and why you should never skip neck day is because if you have a thicker neck, your facial aesthetics also improve. It's not just about your body. If you have seen one of these before and after pictures, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The same guy with the same face, of course, looks tremendously better with a thicker neck. The face looks more aesthetic, more masculine. The jaw looks more square, etc., etc. The, the face looks less fat. It is truly miraculous and therefore there is no excuse not to train neck. On top of that, it's one of the most important muscle group in the human body because it can protect you from severe injuries. Science has proven that an inch on your neck can protect from concussions and it can save your life in a car crash, for example. So it's both tremendous for aesthetics and function. And since it is now winter, I think that this is the perfect time for you to start training neck if you have neglected it in the past. Why? Because bulk rhymes with neck gains. As you gain weight, your neck is going to naturally increase in size. And you'll find that the benefits are really twofold. Not only do you gain faster, but on top of that, you'll find that you're not going to look as bad as you bulk. All of that people have that issue with bulk. They gain a lot of weight, they get massive, sure, but their face also balloons up and you end up with a moon face and that's not attractive. You will find that as you train your neck, the surface area of the neck increases and therefore fat has more space to distribute itself, meaning that your face is going to also look less fat as you go up in weight. However, let us not use this as an excuse to get fat this bulking season. I see that too often with dudes who want bigger necks and they quickly realize that a bulk is the faster way to get a bigger neck, so they just eat and eat and eat. The point of this video is to make you gain muscle, because if you don't, you're going to lose on all of the benefits. The point is to have a more aesthetic face as you bulk, it's to look better as you bulk. But if you gain fat, you're not going to get that. And on top of it, you're also going to have to deal with all of the side effects that are wrongly attributed to neck training, such as sleep apnea. Many people are afraid to develop their necks because they have been told by someone else that if you grow your neck in circumference, you're going to start choking during your sleep. I, today, I'm here to tell you that this is nonsense. This is not true. Getting muscle around your neck is not responsible for sleep apnea. Overall weight gain is responsible for sleep apnea. And since when you bulk up and you get heavier, everything increases in size, a lot of people attribute the responsibility of their snoring to the neck increase. But if you do things properly, I guarantee you will not have that problem. For having spoken with many of my colleagues on YouTube Fitness, many of them had the same experience. They bulked up, they got bigger, they developed sleep apnea, then they go back down in weight, the snoring goes away, but they maintained their neck. Meaning what? Meaning that it was never the neck's fault. As long as you gain weight conservatively and you focus on getting muscle around the neck, you're going to be all good. I say this because I think it's one of the main reasons why men avoid neck training, even though many people like Alpha Destiny have done a tremendous job at promoting neck training. You must keep in mind that 10 years ago, if you went to a commercial gym and you started doing neck curls, people would look at you weird, like you're some sort of deranged maniac because it was not in the common consciousness. But nowadays it is. And so any excuse that is going to prevent you from actually training your neck needs to be dashed. But it doesn't stop there. You see, as I said, men like Alex from Alpha Destiny have created a great methodology for training neck. And I recommend you check out his channel. He has many videos on the topic and he blew up his neck with his methods. So they 100% work. I'm not here today to tell you that I have the secret. The secret has been known. It's very easy to grow your neck. 
What I have found, however, is that what prevents men from doing so is not necessarily that the methods don't work, but instead that they cannot actually stick to the methods. It's a little bit like calves in Rosie. We know how to grow them, but it's just that it's so boring to train your calves that many people just don't stick to it and they end up with shitty lower legs. And considering how easy it is to get the maximum out of neck training with very little equipment and very little training, to me, this is something that needs to be corrected. So this is essentially what I'm going to be doing with this video. What I'm going to share with you is nothing new, but it's a method I created to make sure that you're going to get your neck training in no matter what, and you're going to see great results. For me, there are three stages of neck training. One, pencil neck. You've never trained your neck and it looks like shit. Two, intermediate, where you've gotten to a point where your neck looks sizable and you look aesthetic. And three, monster, where your neck is now out of proportion, but you look super cool, you look like a beast. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm much more inclined to prefer the second category, and that is what I have. My neck is not monstrous, it is now 17 inches, but I'm fairly satisfied with that measurement. I don't want to take it beyond. And for me, the golden standard of neck size for aesthetics is a case-by-case -case situation, but you can assess it via a very simple visual cue. When you face standing like this without flexing your neck, your jawline needs to be aligned with the neck. So in this situation here, you see that you can draw a straight line from my jawline to my neck. They are perfectly aligned. And that is what gives you this masculine look. Once you get to that measurement, once you get a neck thick enough to get this visual, you are good in my opinion. You can stop there if you want. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, you absolutely can. But my method is not going to help you. Why? My method, as I said, is very simple. You're just going to need plates and you're going to need resistance bands, meaning that anyone can actually access that type of equipment and do that type of training at home. If you want a monster neck, most likely you're going to have to invest in a harness or you're going to have to have access to a machine to do neck curls because you will be getting to a point in your neck training journey where you're going to have to use more weight and load on the plates. But that is, in my opinion, reserved for people, again, who are very advanced. And I think that it's really a waste of money to spend 300 bucks on an harness when you just got started. In my opinion, you can get a very good looking neck with a five pound plate. It is absolutely possible. And to me, once you max out with a 45 pound plate, you will already have gotten most of the gains that most people would desire anyways. So that is my method. On top of that, you know me, I'm a cheap bastard. I'm never going to make you pay a lot of money for methods. I'm always going to take away that most people are going to be able to access easily. And of course, you know me, it's going to be via supersets. Why? Because as I said, we already know what works with neck training. You have to isolate it. It's the best and easiest way. But placing these isolation sets somewhere in the program, that is the conundrum because many people say what? Oh, I'll do neck at the end of the workout, like calves and abs. And what happens? You never do them. So we're going to make you superset these sets of neck curls. I'm going to place them in between exercises like squat or close grip bench that you love doing. And that way you're not going to skip them because the neck, in my opinion, responds best to frequency and volume. So even with little weight, you can see results as long as you get those sets in. And so doing those sets and making sure that you stick to it is the most important part of the methodology. So we're going to start with the first method, and that is going to be with plates. So the first movement I'm going to be showing to you guys is the neck curl. To me, the neck curl is the safest, easiest, and most effective way to put size on that neck. Some people like wrestlers do neck bridges and they get massive necks. Some people who are very advanced in neck training do more intense lifts and practice more intense methods. This is not what I'm going to tell you to do because you're most likely a beginner in neck training. And on top of that, in my opinion, while the neck is not as fragile as some people make it out to be, if you get a neck injury, it can be extremely severe because there are so many nerve endings in that area and it can impact the entire body. So if we have a method like the neck curl that is safe and effective, I'm always going to promote it. On top of that, it's very easy to load. And if you do the movement properly, you won't have to use much weight. As I said, I believe that anyone who is getting started with neck training can start with a five pound plate on their head and they can go up to 45 pound plates and that is going to be plenty to develop your neck. But what we're going to try to do is do a slow and controlled movement to get as much as possible from the weight 
and a slow progression. I'm going to prioritize frequency and volume and I want you guys to do the same. We are not going to focus on intensity. This is not a squat, it's not a deadlift. The goal is not to show off and show that you can use a ton of plates. The goal is a thicker neck. So as far as programming goes, this means that you're going to stick to higher rep ranges and your goal is going to do as many sets as possible throughout the week, while not, of course, entering completely irrelevant rep ranges. So example, you're just getting started. We're going to start you off with three sets of neck isolation a week. That is not a lot, but that is plenty. You're just getting started. And then you're going to graduate from that. You're going to start doing six sets a week, then nine sets a week, then maybe 10, 11, 12, et cetera, et cetera. And with a rep range of 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 per set, you perfectly understand that this is going to be a ton of volume. Does it mean you're going to be able to move up in weight as fast as with a lower rep range? No, absolutely not. But that is the point. We are slowing down the progression on purpose. So now that you have the proper mindset to start developing your neck this winter, let us see what the movement actually looks like. So to do your neck curls, you're going to have to find an horizontal surface for you to lay on. If you had a harness, you could do that standing up. But in this scenario, we are going to use plates. So what I would encourage you guys to do if you've never done neck curls is first and foremost, get used to the movement because you don't necessarily use your neck to move weight in real life. You use your neck to move your head. So getting acclimated to resistance training with a new muscle group is a good idea. So what you're going to do is you're going to stand on a bench or a surface with your head dangling, of course, your upper back packed and on the bench. And from this position, the movement is simple. This is the neutral position. This is the bottom of the negative. This is the top of the positive back to the neutral position. It's not rocket science. The range of motion is perfectly natural. You don't need to overextend like this. Just go as deep as it feels comfortable. Usually it's going to be when your head hits the back of the bench and then you can just go up like this. What I encourage you guys to do afterwards is to experiment. Some people like to stack their neck. So from here, They'll tuck their chin in like this, and from this position with a rigid neck, they'll do this. And some people like to untuck the chin and they like to go like this, so they like more stretch of the neck. It really is up to you. What is your preference? Some people argue that it's safer with the tucked chin. I personally do it with the untucked chin and I never have any problems. So it's up to your preference. As far as the position of the plate goes, of course, you don't want the plate to be here. I see some people doing that sometimes where they do their neck curls like this. You're not actually putting any weight on your neck here. You're just holding it behind your head. You want the plate to be as close to your nose as possible. So if possible, it should be on your forehead like this. And now as you descend, the weight is actually stacked on top of the neck. It pushes like this and it is not just above the head like this. So this is the proper way to actually position the plate. And even someone with glasses can do it, so you have no excuse. And then in terms of tempo, I recommend something very slow and controlled. So in this position, you are neutral here. You would go here. And you would do something like this, all right? There's no need to explode back up. You want to feel the stretch of the neck. And you will find, as I said, that when you get started, just a 5-pound or 10-pound plate is going to be plenty. Do not be overzealous and do a ton of weight at first. Let some time for your body to actually recover. After your first neck session, you're going to start feeling the strain that you put on the neck, and that is good. You have to acclimate to that. That is hypertrophy taking place. Now, for the next type of neck curls, you're going to have to be on your belly. I personally recommend that you train your neck in every single plane. You have extensions, you have flexions, do them all. The reason why is because if you focus on only one, you're going to develop imbalances, which are not necessarily bad, but it's going to damage your posture. And as we know, posture is very important to look good. You don't want to look goofy. And at the end of the day, since you try to maximize neck hypertrophy, the smallest thing is to train every single part of that muscle and therefore to use every single function of the muscle. And that can really work to your advantage as you program your neck training. If you train neck three times a week, you can train one function a day. That way you give some time for the other functions to recover. Now, of course, when you train neck, regardless of the movement you do, the entire neck is going to work, but some areas are going to be more recruited than another. And since the goal is to run a high frequency, high volume plan, recovery is going to be very important. 
So for this type of neck exercise, as I said, you're going to be on your belly. And it's going to be the same logic in Rowdy. You're going to have your head dangle from the bench. And in this position, you're going to simply do this motion here. For this one, I encourage you to be a little bit more further on the bench. So your upper pecs are going to be at the limit of the bench. And that way you can really let the head stretch forward and like this. You don't want your chin to run into the bench. It's going to limit range of motion too much. And it's a simple motion, but I guarantee you that if you're untrained, attempt it without weight and you already feel the back of your neck screaming. And that is a very important motion, in my opinion, one that many people neglect. Many people do too much of this and not enough of this. They focus too much on these muscles here because these are the visible muscles. But guess what? The back of the neck also participates in the thickness and the aesthetic, especially from the back. If you're the type that wants these popping traps from the back, I have seen and I have noticed in myself and others that training that function of the neck actually helps. Now, the way to load this exercise is very simple as well. You just take a plate and you put it on the back of your head and you replicate the same motion. So in this scenario, get yourself in position and just do the motion right here. And as I explained to you with the previous neck curl iteration, in this case, you really want the plate to be at the back of your head. It's for the same reason. If it's sitting here, you understand that when you're at the bottom of the range of motion here, there is no load on the neck. So you want it as close to the base of the score as possible here without actually resting on your neck. So it's going to be something like this. That way the movement is loaded throughout the range of motion. And you're going to see that for this motion in particular, you're going to have to tuck your chin in. It's going to be natural. Now, something that I want to mention that I see a lot with people who train neck is that you do not have to use the same weight for every single motion or function of the neck. That's ridiculous. Some are going to be stronger than others. It's only natural. And you'll find that the one I just showed you, for example, is difficult. So don't end up with a 45 at the back of your head to do three pitiful reps. That's completely useless for hypertrophy. We want 10, 15, 20 clean reps, clean, slow, controlled reps. And if you apply that mantra, that methodology, you will find that going up in weight is not going to be as easy. We're going to slow down progression, but that is going to greatly benefit your ability to put on size with little weight available. And you could ask me why I'm trying to restrict your use of weights. Why don't I just let you use 245 pound plates, for example? Well, it's because anyone who has gotten to that level of strength for neck training knows that it's not practical. Grasping two big 45 pound plates to neck curls is a nightmare. It becomes a grip exercise, it slips, and you stop actually using your neck. So it's something I want to avoid. If you want to get to that level of strength and that territory of neck training, you're going to have to invest in an harness. But you can get most of your gains with 45 pound plates as long as you follow the methodology that I'm explaining in this video. So for this last neck exercise, we are going to do lateral movements of the neck. You're going to tuck in your chin and from here, this is going to be your range of motion right there. And you understand that if you want to load it, same logic, you're going to put a plate on your head like this and it's going to serve as resistance. Interestingly enough, your hand also can work as resistance. You can use your hand and your strength to press and to create pressure that you have to resist against. A lot of people actually train their neck that way and it functions. The issue is that it's very hard to progress that way because you don't know how much strength you're applying. So prefer plates, but for finisher sets, you can use your hand or you can use a body. If you use a body, make sure you don't use a powerlifter. They will force and break your neck and now you are paralyzed and they will not be pushing you around in a wheelchair. I guarantee you that they have sets of squats to do. Now, between you and me, I personally hate that motion because to me it is painful and I have hurt my neck in the past doing it, so I skip it. Is it a good idea to skip a function of the neck? No, not necessarily, but you can still grow even if you don't do it. Still attempt to do it, but if you don't like it in this fashion, I have another method I'm going to cover later that is much more comfortable in my opinion. And same logic here, don't try to put a 45 pound on the side of your face like an idiot, start with baby weight and grow from there. This is a difficult motion, so let it be challenging because that challenge is what is going to breed hypertrophy. And now for the second mode of resistance, we are going to use a resistance band or elastic band. And the logic is going to be the same. 
as you go up in strength and performance, as your neck increases in size and work capacity, you are going to use bigger plates and you are going to use thicker bands. And in the same vein as with the plates, we don't want to go up in resistance too fast. We want to milk the easier bands. And when we cannot progress anymore, then we move on to the thicker bands. And the logic is going to be the same with set band. You're going to do the exact same motions, but this time standing up. So here, for example, if I want to train the front of the neck in this position, I'm just going to position the band right there. I'm going to create tension by moving away from the rack where I tied the band, and I'm just going to do my motion right here. So in essence, it's going to look like this. As you move away from the rack, you increase tension in the band. This is the neutral position where my hand is resisting the tension. And as I move my head back, the tension moves to my neck. And as I move my head forward, I use the musculature of the neck to move the head. And this is the way the movement is done. Now, the particularity of using the band is that I have found that as a finisher, what you can do is you can just move forward. And as you move forward, you increase tension into the neck and you can resist it like this. So in this position, there is maximum tension on my neck and on my traps right there. You can see they work tremendously. I personally like the band much more than I like the plates because to me it's more comfortable and I feel like the tension is also more conducive to neck hypertrophy. I have no proof, but I think that you guys are going to be able to make up your mind on the question because you should use both methods. Why? One, because it's going to give you two types of resistance. It's going to prevent overuse injuries, but also because it's going to make it more fun. Diversity is going to keep you going back. And that's what I want with this method. I don't necessarily want the most optimal way to build up your neck. I want to use the one that you're going to stick to. And I think that this is the best way. So for the band, as you understand, it's the same logic. If you want to train the back of your head, you're going to tie the band around your neck and just face the rack instead and move away from the rack. And if you want to do lateral movements, you're going to tie the band on the side of the head and do movements like this. I have found, as I explained to you guys, that this type of lateral movement of the neck using the band is much more comfortable than with a plate because you're not fighting against gravity laying down, you are standing up. So give it a try as well and let me know what you guys think. So this is going to be that for this neck training video. I hope that it's going to give you the incentive and motivation to get started and also the method and methodology so that you stick to it throughout the winter. And that should give you plenty of gains, plenty of facial aesthetic gains, but also boost your upper back development. You'll find that growing your traps is easier when you also train your neck as well. So again, there is really no reason for you to skip neck training. Absolutely make sure you include it in your program. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.